Hello everyone and welcome to a review for Recipe for a Charmed Life written by Rachel Linden. This is a contemporary romance magical realism which I am surprised by. <laughs> now this book was a complete cover buy for me so I did not know that it was magical realism. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised once I found out uh, for sure what the trope was when I looked at the tags on Goodreads. Um, I was surprised, but pleasantly so, because I was enjoying the book. This is told in third person, and this we are, let's see, was published in 2024. This is a standalone, and the audiobook is narrated by Tracy Odom, and it's 11 hours and 36 minutes on standard one time speed. This takes place on two different continents. Chapters 1 through 6 and then 35 through 38 take place in Paris, France. And then chapters 7 through 34 and then 39 through 42, including the epilogue, so be 43 chapters if you add the epilogue, take place in Seattle, Washington. So this takes place on an island off of the coast of Washington, so a little bit more of an isolated setting. The island on this is a small town. So it's a small town romance. You also have the trope of a grumpy sunshine. So, yeah, this was this was good. Um, I really enjoyed this one. So we're following Georgia. There's a couple of chapters that um, are from the perspective of Cole. Right? Yes, from Cole. But that's like two, maybe three chapters, but definitely at least two. And Georgia is a 33-year-old young woman, and she is in Paris trying to fulfill her dream of becoming this head, highly sought-after chef of a famous restaurant. So she has this ability to know what to add with food to make it perfect. However, as of late, she has found that she is struggling with losing her taste, not in the way of like she can't taste anything. But one, her cooking's not up to par as it has been. And two, um, when she eats food, she can only taste bitter. So if she has a cookie and she's supposed to taste the sweet sugar of it, she can't taste the sweetness. She can't taste anything sour, so nothing vinegary like a pickle. All she tastes, no matter what she has, is bitter. She compares it to coffee grounds. So there we go. So she's a little concerned for that. So we open up with her at this restaurant. She is cooking in this restaurant with with a brigade of other chefs. She is the sous chef. Um, her boyfriend happens to be the head chef of this restaurant that she works at. She is looking for him to ask a question, finds him in the refrigerator, having sex with someone else that works there. So he is cheating on her. In a fit of rage, Georgia makes a decision that is not great and it involves a food critic. So that's what I'm going to say about that. Now, she was con being considered by another famous chef in Paris to run one of his new restaurants. This kind of places things on hold. He was highly considering her and now she's kind of moved down the ranks a little bit and she's still highly considered by him, but so are a couple of other chefs. So he tells her that she has lost her spark and that she needs to go and find her spark that ignited that love of cooking, that love of food. So she decides to do that. When she's going through her email, she's trying to figure out what to do. She gets this um, email from, because she only checks her email. She had over like 100 emails and she only checks it like once or twice a week. But she sees an email from her mom who says, hey, please come. You know, I'd like to get to know you. She is surprised that her mother has reached out. She's been told her mother wants something to do with her when she's been growing up. Her mother left her when she was a child at like five years old. So you have child abandonment there. Um, and so she replies saying yes. So she ends up in Seattle, Washington on this little island. Uh, meets Cole, and that's where the grumpy sunshine kind of kicks in. Meets her mother. And finds out there are some secrets being kept. And she slowly starts to uncover some of these secrets, like some of them are Cole's secrets, some of them are her mother's secrets. 
and things don't quite go how she was thinking they would go while she was in Seattle. Some things are, but some things don't. And then she ends up back in Paris, and decisions are made, and then she's back in Washington for the end of the book. So that's kind of what I'm going to say about that. So she's going on trying to refine her spark with things. So as I said, she's 33 years old. We don't get the exact age of Cole, but he's probably about the same age, maybe just a little older. As far as content and trigger warnings, you have an affair, abandonment, death of a friend, you have liver cancer and breast cancer mention, as well as someone talking about being a recovering alcoholic. You have loss of a loved one, not a friend, but I'm talking like a family member type of a situation. You have overdose talked about, as well as DUI or driving under the influence. You have dementia mentioned, as well as drug addiction. So, a couple of heavier topics in this. Uh, one thing is, that is referenced in this that comes up quite a bit is the Grateful Dead. I did not listen to the Grateful Dead, but I remember them being popular when I was in elementary school. And I had a tie-dye shirt of the Grateful Dead. Now, I just thought it was a bunch of teddy bears and a cool tie-dye shirt. I didn't know it was the Grateful Dead. I found out later on in life that it was, in fact, a Grateful Dead t-shirt. So, but I liked the t-shirt, and I remember that. So anyway, so that kind of made me giggle when I would see that come up. There's a dog in this um, that takes an instant liking to Georgia and is really sweet. And you can see that the dog can sense the how the people in the house are feeling because it kind of looks back and forth between Georgia and her mom with things that are going on and the demeanor of the dog kind of reflects the demeanor that's going on in the household. Georgia grew up in Texas, so Texas is mentioned quite a bit as well. So yeah, those are the content and trigger warnings and the references and what this book is briefly about. Now, Rachel Linden did write some other books and this is my first time with Rachel Linden, so this is a new to me author. Some other books that she has is The Magic of Lemon Drop Pie and and this book. So it looks like this is her second book. I definitely want to get her other book and read that. So I think what would be interesting... Now in this book, there are actually two recipes in the back. We have Georgia's favorite mousse au critten, critten? I don't know how to say it, as well as an egg dish, I believe. Georgia's Easy and Delicious French Omelette. So we have two recipes at the back of the book. And let's see. What else can I tell you? Let's see. I'm going to read the... I don't do this with all of them, but I'm feeling like I want to read the about the author at the back of the book. Rachel Linden is a novelist and international aid worker whose adventures in more than 50 countries around the world provide excellent grist for her writing. She is the author of The Le Magic of Lemon Drop Pie, Ascension of Larks. Okay, now this wasn't listed in the front of the book. So Ascension of Larks, Becoming the Talbot Sisters, and The Enlightenment of Bees. Currently, Rachel lives with her family on a sweet little island in the Pacific Northwest where she enjoys creating stories about hope, courage, and connection with a hint of romance and a touch of whimsy. So if you like whimsy... There you go. So the magical realism comes to part as family history and certain people having a magical touch with certain things. I'm going to let you learn that, but that is in there. So there is a little bit of kind of magic. Uh, people's mind, when they learn about this, will sometimes go to witchcraft, but it, they do not consider it witchcraft. Okay. All right. So in case you are still on the fence with picking this book up, Let's go ahead and delve on in to some quotes. <laughs> I was going to do something different, but yeah, let's do the quotes. People are afraid of things they don't understand. And I won't tell you all the quotes that I personally underlined. You can find a lot of these out on your own. You have a right to your anger. No question about that, but be careful. After a while, it starts to harden into something ugly, something mean. As the years pass, you either soften or you calcify. One more quote I'll give you. Just remember, nothing is more important than the people who love you. 
Relationships are the most important thing, not a career or work or success. People who love you are the greatest gift. Uh, oh, a lot of references to Julia Child. She kind of does this like WWJCD. What would Julia Child do? <laughs> okay, a lot of talk about that. Now, in case you are still on the fence, let's go ahead and give you the word counts. You have, now again, there is no open door sex, okay? The most explicit thing is a kiss, and then when she walks in on her boyfriend having an affair, it just talks about, like, the person's leg being wrapped around the hip and seeing the top of her breasts. That is it. Um, but some of the words that do come up, you have banging, one time, breasts, three, ass or arse, because sometimes this is in the UK, um, or in uh, England, Europe, that's the word I was looking for, uh, seven times, prick once, bastard once, bitch once, lord three times, kind of in a religious sense, like, oh, help me type of a thing, um, be praised, but not heavy on religion, uh, snog three times, damn it once, the name God three times, not in a religious sense. The word suicide once does not get descriptive. Whore once and balls once. So think female vengeance when it comes to balls and what they want to do with those. <laughs> so anyway, that, that's pretty much it. Again, told Nan, third person. And this was just a very sweet, grumpy sunshine, small town. For the most part, small town. Again, Paris isn't a small town, but m the romance aspect takes place in a small town. So let me know, have you read Recipe for a Charmed Life by Rachel Linden? Have you read any of this author's other works? Are you interested in this or knowing what I have told you in this uh, review? Have you decided to skip it or are you more intrigued to pick it up? Let me know. Talk to me in the comment section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book and I'll talk to you later.